Hello and welcome to my channel, Vice Rhino here. Today I've got a real treat for you. It's Shock of God. If you aren't aware, this guy makes apologetics video while riding his motorcycle, and he has no clue about how to equalize volume on the left and right channel, so they're painful to listen to using headphones. But don't worry, I fixed it for him for my video. It took me all of 10 seconds on Google to learn how. Though to be fair, this guy has the intelligence of a rock, so I wouldn't expect him to know how to Google. Let's do this! Well, you know what year it is, 2017, and I predicted it, remember guys? I said every year the atheists say this will be the year that we disprove God. Speaking as someone who probably watches way too many atheist videos on YouTube, I don't recall hearing any atheist ever say anything about disproving God in a certain year. In fact, most of what I hear atheists saying with regards to disproving God is that the burden of proof does not belong to the atheist. It is on the Christian to prove God, not the other way around. You can't prove that I don't have an invisible, intangible magic dragon living in my basement. Therefore, it's true. His name is Jesus. And they never do. And now it's 2017, and they're promising, okay, this will be the year that they disprove God. Source, please. I would really like to know which atheist said that so all the rational atheists can go give them a collective slap. Unless, of course, you're strawmanning us. But that's completely unheard of from you. So what we're going to do is I'm going to talk about why the atheists cannot disprove God. You know, um, it's hard to find atheists in real life. It's hard to find them. Yet they are all proclaiming that they will prove that God doesn't exist. It really is. You can't find them. They're all on YouTube. Uh, you do realize that it's human beings from real life that make YouTube videos, right? And you're saying that as if being on YouTube immediately removes all their credibility. And you're saying that on YouTube. I really hope you appreciate the irony of your statement. <laughs> so if they won't come to us, we'll come to them. You know, uh, we are on the Yamaha R1. If you're a Christian, you believe that this is the product of intelligent design. ID, intelligent design. If you're an atheist, you don't like intelligent design. You probably believe this motorcycle just popped into existence uncaused out of nothing. Well, obviously. I mean, it's not like we've ever seen a motorcycle factory before. So I used to be an atheist, as you guys know. That statement means nothing. Everyone is born an atheist. It's the default position. You have to be taught otherwise. So at one point, even the most devout lifetime Christian was an atheist. Along the same line, but completely unrelated, here's a fun fact for you. Every animal's embryo develops the intestinal tract before anything else. Most animals develop the mouth end first, but humans are one of a select few species that develop the anus end first. So at one point of your life, you are literally nothing but an asshole. And it's 2017, and I told you they were not going to be able to disprove God all throughout 2016. They're already saying, okay, 2017 is going to be the year. Nobody is saying that. If they actually were, you might provide some names or references. He repeats himself on this while saying different years that the atheist said they disprove God, so I'm just going to edit them out rather than keep repeating myself. Now, I feel qualified, very humbly speaking, as I come to the ground while I practice, to uh, teach on this, because I used to be an atheist. I tried also to disprove God. I couldn't do it. There's so much evidence on the side of God. But there's zero evidence on the side of atheism. So you were an atheist who had the burden of proof backwards, and the first magical anthropomorphic immortal you heard about that couldn't be disproved was the Christian God. And since you couldn't absolutely 100% disprove him, you became a Christian? This guy is living proof that not all atheists are rational intellectuals. 
challenging atheists for years to answer this question. What proof and evidence can you provide that would prove that atheism is accurate and correct? Would you like to know why no atheist has answered that question for you? It's because your question is malformed and it has the burden of proof reversed. It's on the person making the extraordinary claim to prove it. It is not on the default position of not believing the extraordinary claim. What I want is atheists to make videos giving us some proof and evidence that would show that atheism is accurate and correct. I recommend Aaron Ra's series called Refuting the Irrefutable Proof of God. While it doesn't provide evidence for atheism, since atheism is the default position, it does provide ample evidence against Christianity. Atheists, repeat after me, I'm going to say something three times. Thumbing a video down does not prove that atheism is actually correct. You are an asshole. And not one of the embryonic assholes I was talking about earlier. You're a fucking huge, condescending asshole, and you make me want to log into my other YouTube account to thumb down your video twice. I shall refrain, because I do have a modicum of mature- Oh, who am I kidding? I'm as mature as a toddler in a bouncy house. THUMBS DOWN, BITCH! And I'll skip past the other two times you say it, or I might be tempted to sign it up for additional accounts just to thumb it down more. Now here's a tip for you though, you may get less thumbs down if you opened up the comments. If the only way someone has to communicate with you about how stupid your video is, is via the thumbs down button, more people will do it. If you let them comment, they may not bother. What we want is we want you to do a video and go through a list of reasons why you believe that atheism is accurate and correct. But I'm going to tell you why you're going to fail. Nice. You're providing your rebuttal to my video right in your original video, so I can just address that and save us all some time. Let's go through a list. Number one, they'll say God is evil. No, <laughs> they'll say God's evil for destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. Ah, the good old days. No, how could God be evil if he doesn't exist? Lord Voldemort is evil. I don't believe Voldemort exists. But the character is most certainly evil. Anyone with ten working brain cells would be able to figure out that when atheists say God is evil, they're referring to the character of God, not admitting that a God exists. But how could God be evil if he doesn't exist? And so there's lots of videos on YouTube where they're saying God is evil. And they go through all the things, you know, God required his son to go to the cross and all these things. We'll talk about this. But atheist mistake number one, you gotta quit saying God's evil. If you want me to worship the character of God as portrayed by the Bible, first, you must convince me that he exists. Secondly, after I'm convinced that he exists, you must convince me that he is not evil. You saying, stop saying he's evil, guys, is not very convincing to me. Because the rational person, when they hear you say God is evil, what they think is, oh, you believe God exists, you just have a disagreement with the way God does things. As I mentioned before, anyone more intelligent than an amoeba would figure out that we're talking about the fictional character of God. You two-toned, zebra-headed, slime-coated, pimple-farming, paramecium brain, munching on your own mucus, suffering from Peter Pan envy! What's a paramecium brain? I'll tell you what a paramecium is. That's a paramecium. It's a one-cell critter with no brain that can't fly. Don't mess with me, man. I'm a lawyer. It's just much more efficient to cut out the words fictional character when talking to people we assume are intelligent enough to grasp the concept of atheists not liking a character they believe is fictional. So, quit bashing God. I mean, you can bash God, but it's not going to um, make people think that God doesn't exist. No, but it may get Christians who normally only see the good bits of the Bible to start thinking a bit more critically. And this is why Christianity is number one. 2017, he still is king. Yeah, Christianity is still number one. But the fastest growing religion is Islam, and it's predicted to overtake Christianity by the end of the century. The fastest growing overall group, though, are the people with no religious affiliation at all. 
And even if Christianity remained number one and continued growing faster than the others, does popular opinion make something correct? If so, does that include the time when popular opinion had it that the Earth was the center of the universe? Let's go to another mistake. Evolution. Oh, I'm so sick of atheists talking about evolution, thinking that that disproves God. Again, no atheist that I am aware of says that evolution disproves God. It certainly goes a long way in disproving the Genesis creation myth, though. We're going to go through it real quick because I've done this a lot and the atheists still don't get it. I have this strange feeling that you're the one not picking up the relevant information. I'd be willing to bet that you're about to start rambling about the difference between micro and macro evolution, so I'll just say it now. They are the same damn thing, but over different time periods. Eventually, small changes add up, and a new species results. All evolution is is a theory on how things change over time. Big whoop de doo It doesn't talk about how things got here in the first place. Nope. That is in the realm of cosmology, not biology. Unless you mean the first self-replicating organic molecule, which would be abiogenesis. And there's two types of evolution, microevolution, macroevolution. Called it! Microevolution is just creation. It's change within limits. We see change within limits. So what are these limits? How are they defined? What peer-reviewed scientific papers have been written about these limits? We see different variations of horses, but they're all horses, different variations of dogs, but they're all dogs. We see these change, this change within limits. You still haven't defined any limit other than the very vague dog or horse limit. How do you define species? I guarantee you that no matter how you define it, you'll run into problems with your theology and the supposed limits of evolution. You know, those limits that you can't even identify clearly. So, macroevolution has not been proven. I would like to direct you at this point to the Talk Origins archive, two articles in particular. One contains a list of evidence for macroevolution, and the other is a list of observed instances of speciation, both in the lab and in nature. Links in the description. We have not found the missing link. We ain't ever going to find the missing link. I don't care what idiots like Aaron Raw say. That's right, I said it. Aaron Raw, not Aaron Raw. Anyone who's not an idiot would be able to do the trivial amount of research required to at least pronounce his name right. He's, he says we believe, he believes we come from apes. No, he says that not only did we come from apes, but we are apes. And if you feel you can prove him wrong, he has the phylogeny challenge that you can go through with him. Link to that video in the description too. You can skip straight to 839 if you want. He uses a lot of big words that are probably difficult for your pathetic excuse for a brain to understand. I don't care what he says. There's no missing link. He should know this. You know what? I'm going to do something weird. I'm going to agree with you here. There is no missing link. Because we found it. We found more links than we expected to, actually. I don't care what idiots like Thunderfoot say. There's no missing link. Or idiots like the amazingly hellbound atheists. Or Richard Dawkins. Idiots like Richard Dawkins, who happens to have won the Michael Faraday Prize, the International Cosmos Prize, the Nuremberg Prize, the Zoological Society of London Silver Medal, he's a fellow of the Royal Society and the Royal Society of Literature, and that's not even getting into his education as an evolutionary biologist or his doctorate of philosophy. You calling him an idiot is absolutely laughable. Also, he invented the word meme, so think of that next time you want to share a right-wing uber-religious meme. I look at the evidence, and there's no missing link. I don't care what idiots like this evolutionary biologist say. I look at the evidence. You know, if I told you that I could get all the parts of this motorcycle to go throw it out in the field, and it would uh, come together magically all by itself, would you believe that? Well, if a god existed, that might have a chance of happening. Otherwise, no. No, not out of something dead, out of something non-living, but organic and self-replicating. It must first be alive for it to qualify as dead. 
Do your research. You got a problem, atheist. You cannot deny the, re deny the resurrection of Christ. You can't deny that Jesus died and that it's possible that he rose again. You're saying that we can't deny the resurrection of a human being after three days of being dead because we believe that the building blocks of life, which have been shown to naturally assemble themselves in conditions similar to the early Earth, naturally assembled themselves on the early Earth? Right. We already have evidence of people dying, being, you know, clinically dead for all intents and purposes, and then coming back to life. There's actual medical proof and evidence. Yeah, if the body is not too far gone, it is possible for doctors to reboot it and fix what was wrong. Now we're talking about being dead for a matter of minutes, and no supernatural force is required. Three days of decomposing would not make for a happy resurrection. Well, I'm not saying this is exactly, precisely what happened with Jesus Christ, but it's easier to believe that if God exists, and you agree with that premise, of course God can raise up his son, Jesus Christ. Absolutely. If you accept the ridiculous premise of your magical sky daddy, then the rest seems downright logical. And if you're an atheist, gosh, you believe something much more difficult for a rational person to believe. My atheist friends, you believe that life came from non-life. Yep. And we have a decent understanding of at least one way it could have happened, with future breakthroughs expected. You believe in magic. And now you're about to take two minutes repeating your life from non-life idiocy, so I'm going to skip it. Um, another problem that atheists have, why they have not disproven God, is they keep saying Jesus Christ never existed. A case can be made for the idea that he never existed. I think he probably did, but it doesn't matter either way. And the reason why they say that, I'm going to go through five reasons, five nails in the coffin of atheism, is once you admit Jesus existed, you have five major problems on your hands. So go through this with me, guys. I want you to remember the word alive, like Jesus is not dead, he's alive. Each letter in the word alive stands for something. A is for the appearances. Oh, 15 minutes into the video, he finally got to his first point. Now, I'll bet all five rely on the Bible in order to work, so if you start off not believing the Bible to be true, then none of it will be convincing. In the word alive, everyone agrees, even the heretic, the uh, antichrist, spirit, Bart Ehrman, even he admits, because the evidence is so powerful, that enemies of Jesus Christ, friends of Jesus Christ, people that never uh, supported Jesus Christ, people that were persecuting Jesus Christ, like Saul, for example, that they witnessed appearances of Jesus Christ after his death and resurrection. I will agree. The Bible certainly does say that lots of people saw him. However, it did not make it into any non-biblical historical accounts, and an executed man coming back from the dead certainly would have been worthy of being written down somewhere. L is for the low status of women. If you're going to make up a story, and you're going to lie, in that culture, if you want it to be believed, you need to use men, because women's testimony was not considered as powerful and as truthful as a man's testimony. A few things here. Firstly, tending to dead bodies was woman's work in the culture because of their low status, so it made perfect sense to have them at the tomb. Second, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, nobody believed them until they saw it for themselves. Third, in John, there were two men and one woman as witnesses, and that is the only one that doesn't make a point of showing that the men did not believe the women. You're not going to use women saying women were the first of the two if your goal is to try to convince people to believe in something that really didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, I can totally picture that conversation. Someone being totally, completely convinced of everything you say about your religion, but then, hold on, 
Women discovered the tomb? That's just too much. I can't believe any of it now. I'd say that if you're willing to believe in a magic man in the sky who impregnated a virgin so that he could kill the offspring and then turn it into a sin-eating zombie, the fact that women were doing women's work won't be a big deal to you. But in all the Gospels, there's no contradiction. In all the Gospels... There's, there's no contradiction? I beg to differ. In Matthew, it is Mary Magdalene and the other Mary with guards at the tomb and one angel coming down from heaven. In Mark, it's Mary Magdalene, Mary mother of James, and Salome, with no guards, and a young man already in the tomb, probably an angel. In Luke, it is Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others, with no guards, and two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning, again probably angels. In John, it's Mary Magdalene, Simon Peter, the disciple Jesus loved, who people seem to agree is John, two angels in the tomb that Mary could see and the other two could not, and Jesus himself. Four stories, four completely different versions, but somehow no contradictions? I hope you can explain that one. Low status of the women and them being first at the tomb adds credibility to this historical account. So, no. No explanation as to how those could possibly not be contradictory. And that's all of this moron that I have time for today. We'll finish up with part two next time.